Welcome everyone, I am Tanjila Kanish. I work as a postdoctoral research fellow in Humanized Lab in Monash University in Australia. Together with Australian Laureate Professor John Grundy, I present our experience of teaching a software engineering service course during this COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. I'll start with the background of this presentation. I'll tell you more about the course of our interest, which was designed to be delivered in classroom-based teaching. However, we had to introduce distance learning mode due to this COVID-19 pandemic. We had faced a number of challenges and we learned a lot of lessons. We'll present all of these during this presentation. As I said, this is all about our experience of delivering a software engineering service course in Australian University. The course was initially planned to be delivered on campus. However, due to COVID-19 pandemic, we introduced distance mode of teaching and learning. There were a number of challenges faced and we learned a lot of lessons. Some of the measures we have taken to face uh, to address those challenges were actually driven by student suggestions. The course of our interest is data communications and security. As you can see, this course could be taken by undergraduate students and postgraduate students. The student cohort was quite diverse since this course could be taken by students doing Bachelor of Information and Communication, students majoring on um, software engineering, students majoring in robotics and so. The course provided foundation level knowledge on network basics. We discussed about different protocol stack. We focused on five layer model of protocol. We discussed some common protocols and also we provided uh, them with the characteristics that we want to achieve when we communicate data over the network. We also introduced them with some security threats and how to design measures to protect our network from those threats. A significant part of this course was focused on encryption as well. There were one weekly lecture and one weekly lab. There were a number of labs. However, a student could attend one lab in a week. There were different form of assignments. There were two assignments divided in research and programming part. In the research part, they had to review network traces and find information from them. In the programming part, they had to design different network programs, for example, file transfer programs or normal chatting programs. There were two tests. Those were not quizzes. Those were short form tests and initially planned to be conducted during the lab time. There was one final examination planned, which were paper-based integrated exams. Everything was going as planned until week three. During these first three weeks, we introduced students to the very basic network concept. We also asked them to set up environment for um, network programs. Due to firewall and security issues, a lot of the computers, most of the computers actually in the laboratory cannot be used to um, capture network traces. So we had to set up a virtual environment to serve our purpose. So initial labs were designed to set up this virtual environment and those were actually done by students to set up virtual environment in the lab computers. However, just after week three, when we were starting week four, Due to this global pandemic of COVID-19, Melbourne went under stage for restriction and all the campus around Melbourne were shut down. There was one week pause of any teaching and learning activities and during that week we were preparing to deliver the very same course in distance mode of teaching and learning. There were a number of challenges that we faced during this um, time. We'll discuss some of these challenges here. So after week three, there was one announcement coming from the university 
to all the students saying that there will be one week of pause in um, learning activities and then every course will be delivered in online mode and this and um, specific instructions will come from respective teachers from our end we had to move all the submission due dates because there was one week pause of teaching we had to modify the modes specifically the lab based assessments and paper based assessments were not possible anymore so there were a lot of confusion um, during that time what happened was after we finalized all of these one announcement for this particular course came from the teacher myself um, in the starting of week after the pause week. During this gap, uh, there were a lot of stress uh, among the students and those were conveyed by a small survey that we did and through some emails as well. So sometimes uh, students say that they were lost, they didn't have proper instruction how to proceed forward. So what we did was we tried to follow a pattern every week uh, in conveying our information. I also prepared a to-do list every week and presented those to the students. Um, just at the starting of that week, I frequently sent reminders uh, when the assessments were due and I always encouraged students, uh, mostly in the uh, discussion sessions and whenever possible to turn on their notifications for new assessments announcement so that they were always notified when new announcement came out from the teacher engagement was always very challenging for this course i have been teaching this course for few years now due to the subject content of this course it is very difficult to keep students motivated for two hours usually what i do is i play kahoot quizzes which gives them a game like environment um, and also helps them to focus on the topic that we are discussing. However, those things were not possible in online environment. And I'll tell you shortly, as many different resources were, were being provided to them, students were not interested to attend um, the live lectures. When we started um, this mode of teaching from week four, we provided them with full lecture videos. Students complained that those were really long and it was very difficult for them to keep motivated during this time. They also said that those long videos were bandwidth expensive for them. So what we started, we started using the full lecture videos from previous semester and made those available to students. We created number of short videos every week on the lecture content and provided those to the students. We also moved the concept of live lecture when teacher um, provides that um, content and students absorb those. We moved this concept to a discussion session, which we called catch-up discussion session. We started that from week six based on the student responses we got. So these sessions were more student-driven sessions and students could bring their learning, their confusion, their question to this session. They could actually reflect on what they have learned during that week. This catch-up session was actually uh, scheduled on Friday. You can see one student comment um, that indicates they were really happy with this format. When the first assignment was submitted, um, the programming part, they had submitted one network program which transferred files from one computer to another. Since there was no labs or in-person demonstration possible, I decided to execute all the pro programs myself and mark those. However, I got a lot of exceptions that were really unexplained and most of those were actually related to environment setup. So it was complaining that I didn't have proper environment to execute these programs. 
I couldn't mark those programs because I actually couldn't execute those due to these um, environment related exceptions. When I shared my experience with the students, one of the students actually proposed that we could do online demonstration. Based on that suggestion, I scheduled a number of um, online demonstration sessions when students could book a time, come to this session and show their program. It was very helpful for me as well because I could ask them to make modification to their program during runtime and uh, check the validity of the program. However, due to this setup and change of demonstration format and so on, the results for assignment one was delayed two weeks. The tests were originally designed to be done during lab. However, those were moved to online tests. And what we found that since the nature of these uh, the topic of this course is quite popular and there are a lot of information available on internet. Sometimes a student provided some responses in the questions that was not directly taught in this unit or was not referred to in the reference book that we used for this course. So for the teacher, it was really difficult to check the validity of those responses. We quickly learned from that experience and from test two and onwards, we spe specifically gave them an, an instruction and emphasized on that, that they have to provide references for any source um, that they review to put their responses in. In the final alternate assessment, there was no point of asking any theory based question because all those information were available and this was open access test. The most suitable format of assessment would be a continuous assessment. However, this was infeasible because we already um, had three weeks on campus um, based teaching and we started designing this alternate assessment after week six. So coming up with a number of problem solving scenarios uh, where they could apply the knowledge they have learned to solve the problems were really challenging given the time was really, really limited. This diagram summarizes some of the key changes that we have made uh, with the timeline of the semester. After the semester was over, we found that um, the pattern of the grades, the overall grade distribution was very similar to the previous semester. However, major difference was there was half number of distinctions compared to previous semester and double number of credits compared to previous semester. In previous semester, this course was delivered on campus. There was a minor increase in fail rate around 4%. We believe that was due to the dropouts just after introducing the distance mode of teaching and learning. We'll summarize some of the lessons we have learned. Communication from the teacher is very, very critical and very important. So the gap when an announcement came from the university and an announcement came from the teacher made the students quite anxious. So we had to provide as soon as um, the instruction or announcement came from the university. Um, I, as a teacher, could have provided them with another announcement assuring that we are working towards um, modifying these course materials, assignments, and so on. And we'll come up with more specific instructions shortly that could have uh, helped them to ease a lot of stress. A regular pattern of communication is very important as soon as they know that when some information is coming every week, they start checking those um, announcements quite regularly. If possible, smaller videos are more preferred than longer videos. Um, that is for two purposes. This is bandwidth inexpensive and also it helps to keep students motivated. Instead of live lectures or things like that, or sessions that are uh, actually driven by the teacher, 
interactive sessions are more preferred where the students can actually participate. And this is really important um, to make the online sessions successful. For any open access test, there should be a clear instruction that every response should every response taken from any other sources should be referenced properly. During program demonstration, a student presence is really, really important. So the idea of offline demonstration or offline program execution is not a very good idea. Wherever possible, we should um, try to keep a student present during the demonstration. Set environment setup related task for any service course like this one is very crucial and that proved to be very, very helpful for this course. Since we had set up the virtual environment in the lab machines during the first three weeks, that was really helpful when we moved to online mode and a student had to set up the virtual environment in their own computing machines. So, so those were really helpful for software engineering students who didn't have uh, much networking background. All these things can be taken into account in designing a course and that to cater for different student needs. For example, some students prefer longer videos than smaller ones. Some students prefer to go through the teaching material at their own convenience, where some students prefer to come to the discussion session and discuss their learnings with the teacher. The student feedback is absolutely critical. So a lot of the measures that we have taken was actually suggested by students and it helped a lot to increase the student satisfaction. For any service course like this one, virtual network setup or any programming course, a network setup related um, activities just at the beginning of the course is really helpful. And all of these can help us if the hands-on exp learning experience in any case, become very hands-on. We acknowledge all the students of this unit who participated very spontaneously. This presentation is supported by ARC Laureate Fellowship. Thank you for watching.